All right, welcome everyone to today's episode of Is It Prophecy here on Israel National Radio, Arut Sheva. And the show is syndicated as the Messiah Hour on YouTube. Go to YouTube and type in Messiah Hour with Ari Lewis and subscribe to the YouTube channel. It is free to do so. And you can also find this program on JAP. JAP is a Jewish application which features lectures from historians and rabbis as well as episodes of this program. And you can find JAP by going to iTunes or Google Play stores or the website www.j-app.me. And, of course, you can email me, MessiahHour, at gmail.com. Adar is upon us, and Adar is the month of Jewish women. And on the line right now, bringing back to the program, is Shira. Shira, how are you doing out there? Baruch Hashem. Thank you for acknowledging the power of the female. Yes, indeed. And we have a very special episode of a very powerful female in Israel, Sydney Livni. And uh, but before we do that, talk about how Adar is the really the month of the Jewish women. Obviously, there's Queen Esther, so talk a bit about that concept. Well, it's a wonderful thing. A lot of people have the misnomer, the misunderstanding that in Orthodox Judaism, the women is downplayed. In fact, it's not at all the case. One of our greatest heroes is Queen Esther. And Queen Esther and her uncle slash husband, Mordechai, uh, um, really saved the Jewish people. And it was really about her not being afraid to step up and taking a position of leadership, which for her was a scary thing. She was married to Ahasuerus, the king of Persia at the time, and she knew the rule. The rule was that if you went and tried to speak the king, to the king before he called you, it could mean your death. And so when Mordechai came to Esther and said, look, the Jewish people are in trouble. You have to do something. Go to him. He loves you. She was afraid. She was afraid for her own life. And Mordechai said, look, if, if you don't step up and do this, it's everybody's life here. And the Jewish people are going to get redeemed one way or another. It's either going to be through you or somebody else. And so she asked the Jewish people that they should fast for three days. And she said, if we are together with Jewish unity, then we can ask God for a miracle and make this happen. And so it's really appropriate at the time that we're in right now with these elections coming up and people attacking uh, Bibi Netanyahu or make, pointing fingers at who's to blame for all different things that we really remember this concept of Jewish unity and the concept that we must ask Hashem for help in order to bring the, the Yeshua. So it's appropriate that this is happening now, and it's really something very interesting that I went to go and, and see Sippy Livni speak as a strong woman. I really admire her, that she has such clear ideals. As somebody who thinks that a two-state solution is necessary, I learned a lot from why she thought that. Now, she was pretty candid in her interview. She gave you a lot of time. She gave you about 37 minutes. Anything that you were... <laughs> Me and everybody else in Tel Aviv, but thank you. I know I'm the most important person in the room always. There you go. So she did that, obviously, because this is campaign time, so she wants to get her name out there. But were you surprised at anything she said in the interview or anything if she was particular candid? Anything about that struck you? I think she was surprised by my question. I said to her that I was a, a new Olim and that when I was in America, I had been a teacher and that as a teacher, I am concerned about caving into bullying. I know, for example, when I'm a teacher and somebody's acting up, we don't want to give them exactly what they ask for unless we know that their behavior is going to change. So how do we guarantee that their behavior is going to change? We call their parents. Parents. We make them sign a contract. We take away privileges. These are things that you do to people who are acting irrationally and out of line to get what they want, similar to the way, you know, many of, of Hamas's actions have been all summer. So what guarantee do we have that if we make this two-state solution, it will benefit the state of Israel? And it's interesting. I've been speaking to a lot of diplomats. So the question is, is the two-state solution beneficial to Israel? A lot of people talk about how secure our land borders will be if these particular areas are given to people who are constantly attacking us. So that's one of the questions. And then the other question is, can we continue to have these situations over and over again? It seems to me that Ms. Ms. Levney's position was that the most important thing is the world opinion. If we continue to not have a two-state solution, people all over the world will just – mistakenly think that we have an apartheid state. And then the question becomes, what is the priority? Is the priority keeping the land of Israel whole? Or is the priority what other people will think? And I think that's a really interesting point. She talks about how we're being isolated from the world when people don't understand what's really going on here. And so, you know, the question is, 
what do we do about that? How important is public opinion? And do does the public actually know or have a full understanding of what's going on? Or are they seeing things on YouTube or things as – your president, uh, Barack Obama, said, "If it's if it bleeds, it leads." <laughs> uh, he's not my president, but I understand. <laughs> so it's yeah. interesting. Uh, Israel in a few months will turn 67 years old. They've had only one female prime minister. Now that's better than the United that's States. Better than America, right? Right. No female president. And Sidney Lumet was very close about five years ago. She actually got more votes, but could not form a government. So this is a very impressive interview. We're going to play the interview now in its entirety, and we'll have more on the other side after this interview. Again, this is Is It Prophecy here on IsraelNationalRadio.com. Basically, what is needed in the relations between Israel and the United States is the ability, the possibility, and the willingness to work with any American president and to work uh, and to base the relations on uh, bipartisan uh, relations and not play uh, in the United States or within uh, the American politics. So I wish a speech can make a change on Iran, but this is not a situation. And more than that, the sanctions that were on the table, uh, some of uh, uh, the Democrats even decided not to vote for this because uh, this uh, future speech of uh, Netanyahu created more problems uh, also internally in the United States. So Israel's security needs are based on the relations with the United States, our possibility to create coalition against the extremists, the same coalition for peace, negotiate with the Palestinians. I don't promise that there is, you know, peace agreement uh, just around the corner. It's not there, unfortunately. Uh, a few months ago, uh, well, it was March 17 last year. Uh, President Obama had a meeting with uh, Abu Mazen, and Abu Mazen decided not to give an answer to the framework for negotiations that was on the table. And I had a meeting with Abu Mazen later in order to understand why he didn't give a yes answer to this. And I met him, and I asked him, I mean... You are preaching for peace based on two states for two peoples? Why? And he said to me that he doesn't uh, trust Netanyahu. And I said, okay, it can be a reason, but I feel that this is the excuse. Because there was a framework for negotiations on the table, and you could test whether we are serious enough or not. But what is more problematic for me is the understanding that maybe Abu Mazen discovered where Israel is weak now because of uh, Netanyahu's positions. And this is in the international community. So he can get from the international community the things that he cannot get from us. I mean, we already agreed that the Palestinian state would be demilitarized that we would keep the blocks as part of future Israel and not a part of the Palestinian state, uh, that he would know that the answer for the Palestinian refugees is through the establishment of a Palestinian state and not here in Israel. So what can be changed is that the day after the elections, and hopefully we win, we are going to gain a new window of opportunity. And this tsunami against Israel would stop and they would wait for our decisions, and our decision would be based on uh, an understanding that we are going to act for Israel's security, but not for the isolated settlements. We can get the support of the world in the moment we put this policy on the table. This can push Abu Mazen to new uh, peace negotiations in different terms, which are better for the state of Israel. While simultaneously, when it comes to Hamas in Gaza and other terrorists, we need to act uh, uh, in a military uh, way, in a severe and strong um, way against them. So we believe that we should act in two different sides of the same equation, uh, against terror, against extremism, against uh, Daesh, uh, da, I mean ISIS, uh, Hamas, Hezbollah, Iran, but also to create new hope for peace in accordance to the parameters that I ju just shared with you. 
When Herzog and me, both of us, came from different parts of Zionism, of uh, the Zionist movement, and uh, but we decided to call this new list, this new party, the Zionist camp, because our feeling that we are fighting for, for the nature of Zionism, that the extremists here in Israel took Zionism to places that are completely against the beliefs of our parents, basically mine and his, that Zionism means that Israel is uh, the nation state of the Jewish people, but yet each and every citizen has equal right. Because equality is not just a favor of Judaism to democracy, it's part of the values of Judaism. And our way to express Judaism is to be more friendly, more moderate, to understand that there are different uh, parts and streams amongst Judaism. We don't want to force our beliefs on the others. Uh, but this is something that Likud and Bennett all together are representing another side of something that I believe is not Zionism, but something else. And they are taking Israel to be more and more extreme. And when this is something that they are doing, Israel is becoming more and more isolated. And I feel that this is something that alienates also Jews in diaspora. I mean, well, I was talking about the day uh, in which the state of Israel was established. And, you know, the, 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 the grandparents cried with joy and hope when they saw uh, that the state of Israel is established. And their sons and daughters were frightened when the state of Israel was attacked by the Arabs in uh, Six Days War or in Yom Kippur War. But now I feel that their grandchildren, maybe they don't understand what is the state of Israel now. What does it mean a Jewish democratic state? And they feel alienated. And we expect them to advocate for the state of Israel in the campus in elsewhere. And this is something, I believe, that when Israel is becoming more isolated, more extreme, uh, it affects not only uh, the future of the state of Israel uh, here, but also the connection between Israel and the world Jewry. And this is something also that we need to take in consideration while making decisions here in Israel. Therefore, and I'll finish and uh, give you the possibility to ask questions on all the issues that are on the table, uh, we decided to create together this Zionist uh, camp and to give new hope. And we changed the situation. I mean, these elections were something that Netanyahu decide, decided. Uh, he felt that he's going to create his grim, dream team. Uh, the future coalition is his dream coalition. I believe it's going to be our ni nightmare if they win. And therefore, in a day, when Herzog and me created this uh, friendship between us and the new party, and we are working together in harmony. I know it's something difficult to believe in politics, but this is the way we work together. We created also new hope. The only thing that is left is that you will vote for us on March 17. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to open it up for a few questions, um, but before, I want to take the moderator's privilege and ask you a question. Okay. So um, a lot of us here are Olim. Um, we come from countries from all over the world uh, to move to Israel for a variety of reasons. And, you know, as in the past few weeks, especially in Europe, we've seen, you know, what that meant to be um, a Jewish uh, Jewish person in Paris and, and Copenhagen. <coughs> Um, if, if you were to become prime minister, um, what would you do and what would be your message for these Jews that are living in communities that are under attack? Okay, I'll take some questions and answer together okay. if possible. Okay. okay, so... Yes, I was disappointed that Herzog voted to throw Zawabi out of the Knesset. I wonder, like an explanation. So her question was, for people in the back who didn't hear, is that she was concerned that Herzog throughout um, Zawabi from the Knesset, and she wants to know um, Minister Livni's uh, 
perspective. Um, I would like to ask Minister Livney to explain, obviously not a lot of detail, but what assurances could you give someone like me that if you were to make peace with the Palestinians, uh, which would inevitably create a state on the West Bank for the Palestinians, how does Israel prevent that state becoming, six months later, run by Hamas? Okay, so the gentleman's question was, what kind of assurances can she provide that um, were the Palestinians to get a state that they wouldn't fall under the authority of uh, ISIS so, or Hamas? ISIS. <laughs> uh, if you can pinpoint where Israeli politi political games went wrong or where, and how we can change that in the, after the next elections, so that we don't have all these political the games. The whole system, yeah, something went wrong somewhere. Okay, I'm sorry, what was your question? So I could repeat it for everybody? Uh, what was the specific question? Uh, to pinpoint where Israeli politics were wrong and what can we do to fix it? To pinpoint where the Israeli electoral system is wrong? Politics. Politics is wrong and how... He's talking about the system. The system. And how can we fix the current um, electoral process? Okay, um, young lady over there. Yeah, yeah. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Um, I want to talk about. I want to hear about uh, Israel's relations with the rest of the world, and uh, it's looked a certain way for a few years now because of the current policies. What's the? Um, I guess. What's it going to look like in the future if we're with you to um, improve our relationship with the rest of the world, improve our image? How do you improve the image of Israel, the rest of the world, in your private? Okay, uh, uh, this is first round. I'll take uh, more later. Uh, okay, talking about uh, the relations between Israel and the rest of the world, uh, I do believe that Israel is part of the rest of the world, part of the free world. We share the same values. Uh, Israel is a democracy, real democracy. It uh, should be real democracy anyway. Uh, but frankly, what we saw in the last few years that there are those in Israel that are thinking about the world that everybody there is anti-Semitic against Israel, they hate us, and therefore we need not to work with them, but to work against them. And the only thing that is left is to be isolated, to, to be together against the world. And this is what Netanyahu is doing. He's saying uh, that it's not about what we do, it's about who we are. By the way, it's a very um, smart thing for a politician to say, because if this is about who we are, so he cannot change it. So what's the use of trying? And what, what he is claiming is, the, is that Herzog and me, what we will do is just to appease the world. But this is completely different the way we see things. Uh, we believe that there is anti-Semitism, uh, unfortunately, that rises its ugly head uh, in different parts of Europe, but it doesn't mean that everybody is anti-Semitic. Uh, and the problem and the gap between Israel and Israel's image is based on uh, basically our policy. Because well, when an Israeli prime minister is speaking in terms of peace, few states for two people, supporting peace, but also the need for Israel's security, the world can stand with us for Israel's security. It's our right to defend itself. They understand terror. They know what needs to be done. Okay, that's nice. But when the next moment our ministry, Minister of Housing is going to an isolated settlement declaring that we would never give up any inch of this land, so the world is looking at us and he's, he, he asks us for, to give an answer whether we truly understand what is the price of peace, what are we willing to give up in terms of land, or whether Israel is uh, a colonial state and we send young people to live in places in order to prevent or to avoid any decisions toward peace in the future. And frankly, this is the decision here today in the elections. Because Likud and Bait Yudi, they represent the idea of greater Israel. And those who speak frankly and not just, you know, sell you slogans in the election, you should ask them. If we would have on the other, other side, not Hamas, but peaceniks. The Palestinians would love to live with us in peace. Would you, are you willing to give up part of the land, a small part of the land? Their real answer is no. 
So what we represent, Herzog is me, is really Israel's security, but yet the first thing that we would say is that we make a distinction between Israel's security and settlements activities. And we also make a distinction between isolated settlements and blocks of settlements. And when we make this distinction and priorities between important things for us, like security and blocks of settlements, and things that are less important for us, because it's against our vision, not as a favor to the world, so we can regain the support of the world. And this is something that can happen in a moment, just after the elections. I can share with you an example. A few months ago, I think it was more than a year ago, uh, Europe decided uh, to act uh, or to put some conditions to Israel uh, in a, a plan called Horizon 2020. It relates to research uh, between Israel and Europe, something which is very important for Israel because Israel is really a startup nation. And uh, they, uh, we were almost cut of all the researchers, joint uh, research uh, that uh, are now taking place between Israel and Europe. And Netanyahu was there, and Bennett was there, and they say, okay, we are doomed. We cannot change it. And then they asked me what to do. I said, I need one day. And I called Cathy Ashton, who was uh, the uh, foreign minister of uh, uh, the EU, and one phone call, two text messages, another phone call, and it was changed. And this is not because I, you know, I gave them something, because they believed that what we truly want is not to get, get legitimacy for isolated settlements, but to work together with them uh, for peace. And this is something that they don't trust Netanyahu for this. So this is something that we can change really in a moment. Now, our message also to uh, the Jews in the diaspora, those who are facing now terror and anti-Semitism, listen, as a Zionist, I wish all the, the Jews in the world would come to Israel. I served also as a minister of immigrant absorption. Uh, so we, we love to see them here, but yet I believe that the responsibility that every Jew can decide where to live, and the responsibility of leadership also in Europe in in all these places is to fight against this uh, kind of uh, anti-Semitism and terror against Jews, and this is our expectations from the world leadership to do so. All right, that was part one of today's episode of Is It Prophecy? Share is an exclusive interview with Sidney Levney. We'll have more on the other side after this break. This is Is It Prophecy here on IsraelNationalRadio.com.